Earlier this month, I noticed an event on my calendar that I did not remember putting in. It was for today, August 29th, 2018, the release date of this video. What it was, was the date I put on the calendar for my last day working in someone else's studio. You see, I'd worked for that studio for a very long time, and over the years I'd become very unhappy in the way it was being run. I had wanted to leave for a while, I'd even made a post about it at some point, but I'd become stuck because I was dependent on the job. In early March of this year, I finally realized that if I didn't give myself an ultimatum, I'd never leave, and I put that date on the calendar. I was gone in less than a month. Leaving that particular job and starting my own studio has been one of the best decisions I have ever made in my life. That is not to say that working for a studio is a bad thing, either. I've had the experience of working in a music store that had lessons, a dedicated music lessons studio, and working purely for myself. And today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of working for yourself versus the pros and cons of working for someone else. Let's start with the pros. First and foremost, mentorship. When you work for a store or a studio, there are usually other teachers there to talk to and learn from. Drew, who co-founded the Musician's Notepad with me, is not only one of my best friends and the closest drumming buddy I have, but he's also my mentor. To this day, he's the first one I go to to talk about anything related to teaching drums. And while he's the most prominent in my life, there have been many more that I've acquired throughout my teaching career. You will learn an incredible amount just by being in an environment with other teachers, and eventually, you'll become that mentor to other teachers as well. Lesson Destinations a reputable store or studio is a lesson destination. They're the place in the community to go to for lessons. This gives you the advantage of building a student base more quickly than you most likely could do on your own. The trade-off for this is that the studio gets to take the credit for having a great staff without promoting you as an individual teacher. Advertising. Similarly, it is the job of the studio to advertise their lesson program. The level at which this happens and to which you are asked to be involved will vary from studio to studio. But the overall plan and direction of advertisement should be handled by someone in an administrative role to that studio. This is a huge advantage as it frees up a lot of time and frankly worry. Scheduling. As with everything else, this varies from place to place. The more of a studio it is, the more likely they're going to handle your schedule. For the last handful of years that I was teaching, my schedule was almost completely out of my hands. I just showed up when I was scheduled and I taught the students that were there. Some people hate this, but I really loved it. This essentially means that the studio will also be handling your money. If you trust the studio, this can be a great situation. Tracking down money, whether it's just trying to get that makeup scheduled or trying to get paid for it from a studio is no fun. Another great advantage to the studio system is their ability to schedule while you work. Often cancels come in when you're already teaching, and the studio can intercept that call and get the student rescheduled instantly often to come in at a different time on the same day, instead of you having to call the student back later. This can save a huge headache and cuts down on your workload a lot. Space and equipment. I am fortunate enough to have a dedicated space in my own home located on a main road. Most people, however, are going to have to find a space in which they can teach. A studio, obviously by definition, has this covered. Depending on the studio, you may have to populate the space with your own equipment, or the studio may provide you with the equipment to teach on. If the studio provides the equipment, they should also maintain it. This means that heads, muffling pads, if the situation warrants it, and any other parts that wear out are the responsibility of the studio. The flip side of the studio providing the equipment is that you don't get to control what you are teaching on. Their setup might be wildly different from what you want, and things in your area might change without being consulted. All in all, when everything goes smoothly, teaching in a studio is great. You get to show up, teach in a great environment, get paid, and go home. So let's talk about the cons. Autonomy. We've talked about this a little bit already, but when you work for someone else, you give up some level of autonomy. You have to work within whatever their vision for their studio is. You could find yourself in a situation where you wish there was more going on at the studio, more recitals, more student involvement, more students in general, and there might not be much you can do about that. You could also end up in a situation where the studio wants to control too much, has unrealistic expectations of you, and is so worried about the bottom line that they create policies that negatively affect the learning environment. Rental. If you want to receive the advantages of a teaching studio, you're going to have to pay for it. Literally. 
Quite often in a store environment, you'll end up in a room rental system, wherein you pay a set amount for the use of the room. Usually it's per lesson taught, but sometimes it can be per lesson scheduled or per day use. The more work the store has to handle, the more you'll have to pay. The other way is where the student pays the studio and then the studio separately pays you. This can end up in there being a major disparity between the amount that the student pays and the percentage of that lesson fee that you make. The main issue being that students and their parents often believe that when prices go up, that you get a raise as a teacher. This is quite often not the case. And when there is a major increase, parents will often blame the teacher before they blame the store. I myself was in a situation previously where the price of lessons went up multiple times without getting a raise. Over time, I eventually came to feel as though my work was being devalued as my work was now worth a smaller percentage of the overall package of lessons. In my case, over a span of five years, the amount of the fee going to the studio went from 35% to 50%. No matter what the situation is you find yourself in, it is smart to pay close attention to how you get paid and make sure that the trade-offs you make are worth it. What are the pros and cons of working for yourself? Everything. Everything is a pro, everything is a con, because you're in control of every aspect. Teaching, scheduling, payments, advertising, facilities management, the good stuff, the bad stuff, the medium stuff, everything is your responsibility. It's a much harder job, but you get to do it however you want, which can be completely overwhelming. So this video is going to be the first in a series called Building a Studio, wherein I do my best to give you insight into what it takes to start, build, and maintain your own teaching studio. I'm really excited about that and I hope you are too. All this being said, there are some really great reasons to work for somebody else, to work for a studio, to work for a store, and I would not trade the experience that I got working at the studio that I did for anything. It has been incredibly valuable for me to see what to and what not to do as I've set out on my own. If there's anything you think I've missed in the pros and cons of working for someone else, please let me know in the comments below or send me a tweet at Musician's Notepad with the hashtag building a studio. I'd love to hear your stories. Other than that, please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's hit it.